Hello, everybody. Welcome back once more to Form Check Friday. You know what it is and what we do. If you're interested in submitting for Form Check Friday, go ahead and check the description box below. We're going to dive right into it. We left off last week with uh, Tyler. Now, Tyler, I believe, is doing some pause squats here. Uh, he's 35. He would love to compete someday. Says his progress has been kind of slow. Um, but uh, at this point, he's hit a bit of a squat plateau, he says. Now, he's concerned that his hips shoot up, that he gets a little bit loose in the bottom of the, of the squat. And he says he's working on embracing the lean, so he's allowing his chest to come forward a little bit. Um, but he's wondering how to avoid his hips shooting up. Sorry, I'm just trying to get this mic in the right spot so y'all can enjoy my supple voice. All right, so embracing the lean. I think embracing the lean a little too much here, Tyler. Uh, I think you're actually like intentionally uh, ending up with a little bit of excessive rounding in the upper back, which is gonna cause that bar to pull you forward. And as soon as that bar pulls you forward, guess what happens? Hips shoot up, right? So I think you could actually uh, fight for a little bit more uprightness, uh, a little bit more back extension, a little more chest out, a little more, uh, yeah, like I said, being more upright. Now. Embracing the lean is good and all, but that just means setting the torso angle. What's happening here is the torso angle is set, and then you additionally kind of like over tuck your ribs down. Um, and that's a, that's a really common cue we throw at people who, are, who tend to be really overextended. But in your case, I think we could honestly use more extension for the sake of your squat. And I think we would see a lot less of the hips shooting up. So a little more tightness in the upper back. Like keep this position, right? Your, your trunk is braced in a really good position here. Let's just keep that tight. And when you tilt, tilt the whole thing as a unit. Don't go like this. Don't like curl your back down. You know what I'm saying? Then... When you're coming out of the bottom, number one, pause a little bit longer for pause squat. I think I think having like a very distinct or a more distinct pause in the bottom is gonna get you more out of your exercise. Like out of this exercise, we want a good, uh, uh, very distinct isometric contraction in the bottom. We wanna kill that stretch reflex, right? There, we're, we're, those are all the things we're trying to do here. And I think your pause is just a little bit short for that. Um, but yeah, we're just we're just kind of giving into the lean a little bit too much to the point where we're losing upper back position. The other thing I'd do is maybe play around with your grip. Looks like you're pretty jammed in here, right? Like your your wrist is at a really extreme angle, which isn't inherently bad, um, but it's causing your elbows to be pretty far up behind you, uh, which generally means the shoulders are going to be a little shrugged up, maybe a little protracted in the shoulder blades. So if you widen your grip. You might be able to pull your shoulders back and down into a better position and again just like put more tension into that upper back so that might actually kind of go hand in hand with what i'm talking about here so give that a shot let me know how it's going welcome to friggin hogwarts or whatever the hell we got going on in the background today next up is akmal and before we get to akmal i want to take a quick second and just let you all know, we are running a flash sale on the Calgary Barbell Training app. We've talked about this a few times. Feature rich training log, plenty of, uh, you can upload all of your videos to it so you don't have to store them on your phone. It's got, uh, I think 12 or 14 programs with another probably 10 plus coming out in the next month or two. And, um, it will help you, you know, by recommending loads. Uh, you know, the app has a lot of different stuff going on into it. And the other really, really good thing that I think makes uh, the app a wonderful value is you get access to our app only Discord community where myself and the other Calgary Barbell coaches are doing form checks just like what you're seeing here. Um, we're in there answering questions about how to modify the programs, how to deal with issues as they arise, how to individualize things based on your own restrictions, whether it's movement restrictions or equipment restrictions. It's, uh, it's basically coaching light. So if you head down at the, the uh, description box below, Dylan's gonna have the promo code and he's gonna have the website there and you can go ahead and get your first month for 60% off. So check it out. Anyways, back to Akmal. We'll put this on repeat. 
So Akmal is from Pakistan. Shout outs to Pakistan. Uh, working set of four at 98 kilos here, roughly 80%. So a couple things he noted here was that number one, his lift tends to get easier as the workout progresses. Uh, number two, he, think, he says he, get, he has problems with leg drive. So trying to maintain good tension through the legs. Um, he prefers a medium grip. He says he went wider and it bothered his shoulders. Um, and he says uh, he kind of like tends to lose upper back position. Uh, he says the bar seems to tilt a little bit to one side. He loses a little bit of strength. So the biggest things I'm noticing here, man, start right from the setup. Right from the setup, I think we can do a lot more to get tight before we unrack, and we can do a lot more to maintain tightness as we unrack. So I would probably move this down one. Move your your cup, your hooks down one. Even if that's a big difference, you look you look like you're really having to reach for that bar. So if that bar is like, you know, here and we can move it to here, you're gonna be able to get your shoulder blades into such a better position before you start. And then you're gonna be able to unrack with the triceps. We talk about this a lot on the channel, but basically if you can unrack like this with the elbows, just unrack with the elbows, not like this with the shoulders, right? As soon as we pop the shoulders out to unrack, we lose all of that wonderful work we just put into that setup. Uh, and then we end up kind of undoing a lot of the back tightness we're trying to create with the entire bench setup. The next thing is this bench height and the length of your legs uh, is gonna make it tough to get good leg drive. So what I would say is try and pull your heels back a little bit more uh, and then really force your heels down into the ground. One of the things we often look for is getting the knee below the top of the hip. Right, so it's kind of like reverse depth. We, we want a high squat in your bench leg press, or your, your bench leg drive, sorry. Um, so yeah, maybe you know the feet need to go wider. Sometimes that works really well for people, but generally speaking, just pulling them back further underneath you can help you get a little bit more tension. And what we're trying to do with the feet and with the legs is trying to basically push this way so that the pressure uh, coming up the bench is gonna lift your chest up because obviously a lot of friction, a lot of weight bearing down on this specific part. So this isn't gonna move, but what will move is the rest of your body back, which is gonna lift your chest up into the bar and help you create and reinforce the position we're looking for in the bench press. So yeah, you can see how much you have to reach out and, and really kind of flatten your back and lose a lot of shoulder position to get this unrack. So from there, it's just like, you're just not set up for success through the rest of this. The, uh, the bench itself, like we're a little loose on the chest would be my other critique here, right? We come down and it's like bouncing. So try to be tight enough that you're just touching your t-shirt, right? Don't let that bar sink into you. Try to keep the weight of the bar in your hands, not on your chest. And other than that, like your bar path is pretty decent. The descent path is pretty decent. Uh, it's just a matter of fixing the setup and then being a little tighter on the chest, I think. And that'll take you a long, long ways. All right, and our next form check comes from Margo. Now, Margo's been doing powerlifting for about two years. She says she's planning to compete at EPF Euros in December, so good for you, Margo. Uh, she says her deadlift is stagnating. It's been a few months now, and she says usually it's her strongest lift. So we're gonna take a look and see if there's any technical we can pick out. A lot of the times when people are pretty strong and we're running into plateaus, I gotta, I got a default to probably programming issues. Probably, and not even issues, but just like, you can't do the same, you can't take the same strategy forever, right? A good coach or, or you know, if you're really mindful of your programming, if you're doing it yourself, um, somebody who's mindful of powerlifting programming and, and measuring the response of the athlete against the inputs uh, in terms of intensity, volume, you know, all those kinds of variables, exercise selection, all that kind of stuff. Somebody who's monitoring those things really well is gonna notice um, and know to basically run something until it doesn't work and they'll have a decent idea of when it stops working and they'll be ready and have that next thing lined up, right? You need to be able to modulate training. And I think one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they modulate training all the time. It's all willy nilly, right? You go fives, then fours, then threes, then twos, then sixes, then fours, then threes, then twos, then five, then four. And then at the end of a cycle, you've done 15 weeks of these descending sets uh, or, or descending rep ranges. And you're left wondering like, okay, that worked or that conversely, that didn't work. What was it about any of those things that was what worked or didn't work, right? Like, how do you pick out what what about that was successful? What about that drove your adaptation? You know, if you cycle through a bunch of exercises all the time, how do you know which exercise is working, 
or, or whether an exercise is working, right? So I'm a big advocate of changing less in training uh, and, and changing things with intent. So all that to say, I think one of the things I'd look at first and foremost, Margo, is your programming, right? Like you've got a, a really solid deadlift here. You're pulling 160 for reps, like you're strong. Um, so it's probably not mostly technique. I would say it's mostly programming, but I do think there's some things we can do with the technique. If you're willing to take the time to step back and like adjust some things, it may or may not be worth it is the other thing with an athlete at this point, it may or may not be worth it to take the kilos off the bar and spend the time to reform the technique because it may or may not provide you with a higher ceiling, right? It's really tough to anticipate whether or not it's worth doing. But what I would have you do is essentially try to, and maybe you could program this as a secondary day would be a decent way to go about it. But I would, I would basically try to get you to do flat back deadlifting, right? Cause right now we're, we're flexed back deadlifting, but it, it looks like you're plenty strong enough to lock it out. Right? So it's not, it's not a really big thing. Like your, your, your velocity through the lift, your strength curve is pretty consistent. Um, so that leads me to think like, okay, let's look at programming first and foremost, right? Like if you were my athlete, that would be the first thing I'd look at is like, okay, programming. I wouldn't be like, okay, we need to take, you know, 40 to 60 kilos off the bar, have you do flat back deadlifts and, you know, maybe in eight months we can reapproach these weights unless, you know, we've exhausted all other options. But yeah, that would be the thing I would do if you were looking for strictly technical advice would be like, okay, let's pull the shoulders down more excuse me, let's get a more neutral back angle. Um, you know, let's, let's try to reach your hips back towards that rear wall. So we get a little bit, uh, of like APT or anterior pelvic tilt, as opposed to posterior pelvic tilt, which is what we're in now. Uh, a really useful trick is if this is the front of the person and this is the pelvis, imagine the pelvis is full of water, right? Anterior pelvic tilt means the water is going to fall out of the front. Posterior pelvic tilt means the water is going to fall out of the back. So if we are tilted like this, there's the spine. This is the front of the person again, and the water is going to fall out the front. This is anterior pelvic tilt. And conversely, that's the word of the day today, by the way, conversely, uh, the water is going to tilt out of the back. That is posterior pelvic tilt. Real quick anatomy lesson for y'all. Uh, yeah. You know, the other thing I would do, in your training, I, was, I, I would put more emphasis on your lockouts and holding your lockouts and making sure that you're really selling all of your lockouts, uh, making sure that you're going all the way through, hold for a quick sec, then down, right? Try not to just pop in and out of lockout because there might be a very, very slight bit of range of motion that you're not training as well with your lockout. And when it comes to this sort of uh, round back sumo deadlift thing, and it's, it's a very slight flexion. I don't think it's dangerous. I don't think you're going to blow yourself up. But from an efficiency standpoint, sometimes we can get a bit more with a more neutral back position. That's all I'm saying. So, yeah. Anyways, that is what I have to say about that. So best of luck. And again, you know, if you're looking for good programming, Calgary Barbell Training app is on sale till the end of the night tonight uh, for, you know, you get your first month for 20 bucks, 60% off. So go check that out in the description box below. Up next is Samir doing four sets of five. He says at a moderately challenging weight and recently pulled back on the weight to try to address some issues. So he says he's, uh, he's working on improving his depth. Uh, he says one of the things he's been doing to help with his depth is playing around with and changing his, uh, his shelf. So his upper back position and how he's holding the bar. And he's also been working a lot on his bracing. I think he gave a shout out to that uh, Liz Craven video on our channel. If anybody's interested in some really good content that we have on bracing, just look up Calgary Barbell Liz Craven. Uh, there's a really cool video we did with a really fantastic lifter, really wonderful uh, person as far as I can tell, um, from Australia named Liz Craven. And uh, yeah, she gives some really good advice on bracing. So um, honestly, Samir, your squats look majestic. They look phenomenal. I don't think I would have you change anything about what you're doing here. I think your depth is pretty much perfect, right? Like we're, we're hitting depth, but we're not excessive. Uh, we're maintaining our brace throughout the whole lift. We look really even on the feet. Your walkout could use a little bit more 
setup and confidence, right? Like it looks like you're maybe, you know, stutter stepping a little bit and doing a little bit too much to try to adjust uh, as you're unracking. So you could clean up the walkout a little bit. But other than that, man, like these are really friggin' nice squats. I think anybody would be happy to have their squats look like this. I have no issue with any of this. Um, yeah. There's one rep where your hips kind of shoot back a little bit, but again, like you get that under control. And for the most part, like those are, those are phenomenal technically. Yeah. Just keep literally to keep doing what you're doing. Right. I think sometimes it's really worth it. Um, I think sometimes the worst thing a coach can do is over cue something and be like, Oh, you know, we have to change this stuff because I need to have something to say. Otherwise I don't feel like I'm giving my client any value. So if you're a coach, it's okay to say your lifter is doing great, keep doing what you're doing. Sometimes that's the best thing you can do, right? Offering like technique advice on something that somebody's doing really well can sometimes cause their 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 proficiency uh, to, to start shifting the other way. It can be more harmful than good, but anyways. All right, Samir. Sorry, no, this is Joshua. Uh, Joshua, 16 years old, has been doing powerlifting for eight months and wants some advice on his bench. So uh, number one, let's get rid of this towel thing there. Um, I mean, that's that's a wonderful accessory movement uh, if this is intentionally an accessory movement, but I would argue if it's, if it's intentionally an accessory movement and you're trying to limit the range of motion, there should be way more control on the chest, right? Like you're pretty much just letting this bar fall on you. And maybe that's why the towel is there so it doesn't hurt when it hits you. Um, but that should be telling you something, right? We need way more control. Your setup is actually decent. Uh, your grip is really narrow. So I would maybe play around with widening your grip or a more, you know, moderately wide grip even like out this way, just a little bit. Um, but the biggest thing, yeah, is just like, we need way more control in the chest. We need to control the eccentric of the movement. We need to intentionally decelerate that bar as it approaches the chest. And if you're going to use again, something like this to limit the range of motion, then you should be training to that range of motion, right? Like basically the towel is going to absorb a certain amount of force and the towel is going to deform as it hits your chest. So you're more or less doing a full range of motion which would defeat the purpose of having something restricting or, or changing the range of motion. Does that make sense? So yeah, I, I think the biggest thing here is just we need a lot more control. Uh, you're actually doing an okay job keeping your, your upper body position. Um, it looks like you're toe picking here, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I would play around and try to find a way to get your heels down on the ground. I think it's gonna help you with like balance and stability a little bit, it usually does. Um, and then yeah, go from there. But first and foremost, let's get a lot more control. Uh, if you need to lighten it up, no shame in that, man. Like at 16, you know how much I benched? <laughs> Zero. So uh, yeah, dude, you're in. You don't don't be in any rush, right? I find a lot of young guys, and and this is just like normal and common, and not. There's nothing wrong with it, but a lot of young guys really want to like pile the weight on and get super strong, super fast. Uh, I think one of the best things you can do is take your time and learn to, uh, you know, sort of enjoy the process and understand the process. So yeah, dude, uh, widen the grip maybe a little bit and work a lot on touching lighter, being more controlled on the descent. All right. And now we have John. So John is doing some deadlifts. Um, he says he's 22, not planning to compete. Uh, this is a 475 pound double. And he's got a couple of his own critiques here. So he figures uh, his head shoots up. He's not super happy with his back position. Let's see if we can get that to rewind a little bit. There you go, it should be on repeat now. His head shoots up, he's not happy with his back position. He says his hips shoot up. Um, and he says his start position feels strong, but maybe he's not pulling the slack out as well as he could, and it feels inefficient. So my question for everybody watching is, I don't know why this won't repeat properly. Anyways, uh, my, my question for anybody watching is, watch through this video, and I want you to go down below and let me know what your best cues were uh, or are for helping 
figure out how to pull this lock out. Cause I feel like that's something we talk about a lot. That seems to be something a lot of people struggle with. So I want everybody to give their favorite cue or their favorite piece of advice uh, or something that helped them figure out how to pull the slack out of the bar. Uh, I think that could be a really great resource in the comments section if we just have a whole bunch of people's different sort of ways of thinking about it. Because I do think one of, the, one of the things that really good coaches can do well is essentially have a whole bunch of different cues for the same thing, right? Have five or six different ways of explaining the same thing because it's gonna be one of those things that's gonna help somebody get it. And it might not be, you know, the ones you have. So even a good resource for myself to be able to check out y'all's comments on that. So, all right, with that being said, remember Calgary Barbell Training App on sale till the end of tonight only. And we'll see everybody next week for Form Check Friday. Bye-bye.